at Infinity Nation and beyond, we look at the status of your digital landscape and how it affects the growth and profitability of your business. On the show, we will be talking to business leads, partners in the e-commerce world, as well as some of our own specialist team to give you actionable insights and find solutions to help you on your growth journey today. We will consider new ideas, stretch our mindsets beyond the status quo, and in the process, discover how to gain an edge on the competition and drive some great results. Welcome, Rehab. Uh, thanks uh, for having me, Al. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, good. Yeah. You having a good week? Yeah, week has been uh, it's been great. Uh, the team outside are you know routing for me because this is the first podcast I've personally done. Uh, we've done a couple with other partners, but that's my personal first one. So really looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll be kind to you. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> cool. So um, I think one of the things you know, we always look in our overarching growth strategy to support our customers is it's that end-to-end solution. So we are working hard with clients to understand building brand awareness to relevant potential clients, but you're only as good as your last order delivered to the door. So we can do an amazing job at finding new audience, getting them through the sales funnel, getting them to buy a product, product leaves a warehouse, courier throws it over the fence whatever with it you know and it and it leaves a, a semi a tainted view on it but so for us it's a really important part of that post purchase experience is really important to us so um, i think today is we're going to have a, you know some good debates about how you 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 and we see the benefits of working with partners who are specialists in this area because it is uh in you know in in my naive status is it's a, it's a complex and multifaceted world. And, you know, I remember talking to a client not so long ago that it was easier for, and more cost effective to send some lingerie actually to Amsterdam or, or, or to Belgium in the post because of a variety of different levies, etc. that I'm not fully appraised on yeah. than it was just sending it from Bristol up to San Francisco where we are. Yeah. Sort of, it blew my mind that how how that can be. So, I think the first question for me for me is like, you know, one thing for us to debate is what is the benefit of using a solution like SendCloud, if I'm you know as an SMB you know, SME business versus just just having a relationship directly with the careers. Yeah, I mean, where to start from, right? Uh, I think personally and i mean i've been in the e-commerce uh for the past one year um and i've known it from a consumer perspective so i didn't even understand the complexity behind that but like you said logistics is basically one of the biggest uh, pieces of the puzzle when it comes to e-commerce in general um and obviously there are different solutions that can help you with different things um in terms of send cloud specifically and how we support our customers um there's different aspects of it and why us versus other people. I will dive deeper into two points. For us, we really focus on um, having the internationalization element. Um, so we support like things with like custom documents um, and uh, making sure that you have the right rates with the right carriers. Um, if you're looking as a business, you're looking to go in internationally, like how does that kind of look for you? What careers should you be working with? If you're a smaller business that is just starting or in the early stages of your e-commerce journey, um, there's definitely a level of support that we can give there. And that is, historically speaking, how we started as a business. We were very much focused on the uh, SMB side of things. And over the past um, uh, four years, we've really been focusing more towards the, the meta enterprise level. Uh, and they play on different yeah, levels. So from an SMB perspective, um, normally, in, in early days, you don't necessarily have the volumes that will, you know, give you the buying power from a carrier to, to negotiate on rates. Um, so a solution like SunCloud, um, we obviously work with over 25,000 customers, which means we do have volumes coming from our customers, but directly through us, which will allow us to negotiate rates with the different carriers. Um, 
how we started. We started within New York. Um, so we are originated out of uh, Netherlands. Um, Eindhoven is our home, um, and this is where we're headquartered. Um, over the past 10 years, we've actually managed to patch up all of Europe. Um, and that requires a high level of complexity because every country has their own, you know, uh, carriers, their own rules and regulations. And to be able to patch that up um, is yeah, quite significant. And I would say that is one of our unique selling proposition as a solution, um, which means for any business that's just starting or in like the early stages, they can come in using our rates um, and start their process until they actually grow to a significant amount uh, where we can then also support them get the rates directly with the carriers. Uh, having access to more than one carrier is pretty much the way to go nowadays. Um, not to say that going with one carrier is not good. It's okay. But if you want to grow as a business, you need to be thinking about your multi-carrier strategy. And what that actually means is we kind of appear at the checkout for the customers. So once you select your products and you go in and you choose, cool, I'm going to buy those Nikes and like this hoodie and so on, you go to your checkout, you do your payment, and then you've got your delivery options. This is this is basically SendCloud in the, in the back end. So you've got your next day delivery, your three to five day standards and so on. From a merchant perspective, as a business, you want to be able to automate that whole process and give your end consumer options and flexibility. The more options you have, the higher conversions you uh, you get as a business. So there on, they go in um, and through automating that process. So you link in your web shop to SendCloud and through um, shipping rules. So like if and then rules. So for example, um, if you have a product that weighs two um, over two kg, um, then you want it to be shipped, for example, with DPD. Um, if uh, the product um, uh, includes SKU of X, then you want it to be shipped with Royal Mail. Normally, that is in early stages of a business, it's very much done manually, uh, which is time consuming. And you know, to, to save time is to save money in the end of the day for any business. So you automate that whole process and off you go, the whole business is sort of like growing with you and you're creating that seamless experience for the end consumer. It's all about the yeah. customer experience. You raise a couple of interesting points there, which I'm going to ask you more questions on if that's okay. So you mentioned sort of conversion rate improvement, which again, a lot of times people are looking at conversion rate as tech, it's like tech stack, you know, could the button be better? Could this be better? But for me, there's an element of merchandising, which is, is pre your world. But as you say, it's sort of a barrier or a, or a point of abandonment could be, oh, that cost is too expensive, or it's going to take too long. Yeah. Or in the UK, you know, DPD, I'd happily probably pay an extra pound to have DPD just because I know Your the service is better. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm going to get a text saying, you know, it's going to be on this day between this slot. Oh, it's within an hour. Your driver will be there. Shortly. You know, it's just, you know, yeah. DHL the same, but so it's, but if you don't have that choice and they, get, and they go, oh, it's Hermes, I'm picking on someone. They're not even called Hermes anymore, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, I mean, think about it from like your own, you know, your own experience. Let's say, um, I don't know, it's your, you know, uh, son's birthday or your wife's birthday and you forgot to buy the gift because, you know, you're really busy at work or doing this podcast with me. So then you're yeah. like, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to order and I want it next day delivery. If you go into and you choose your products and you're really happy and excited and then you go into the checkout and you're like, oh, damn it, they don't, excuse my French, but they don't have the next day delivery. That, yeah. is, that is a touch point in the customer experience where yeah. there is the abandonment and you lose your customer. You just paid all the money to acquire the customer to get them to that point. And they, yeah, so again, it's, exactly. it's, you know, I have this, I've had this debate with a couple of um, FDs in the business sort of saying that we're looking to chip parcel costs. And I, I get it, I absolutely get it. If we can save 50p every parcel, fantastic my challenge to them was that they were proposing on using one of the i'm not going to name names but lower level couriers mm -hmm. or providers and my concern if you t again if you take that holistic view on it is well we know customer service queries go up 
So there's dissatisfaction from a customer because like, where's my parcel? Where's my parcel? Grows up, goes up where we use. And I think it's really pertinent coming into Q4 because that's a real yeah. pinch point in terms of deliveries. So yeah, that goes up. And then as, as we both, I think we're in agreement, is like that impacts on your repeat purchase probability. Oh, I did buy from them, but the, the, you know, the delivery was woeful. Nothing wrong with the product, nothing wrong with the buying experience, but you remember that the delivery was worth it, so you probably won't use them again. So yes, you save 50p per parcel, but actually you've probably lost tens of pounds in profit on repeat purchase, depending on what product you sell. Exactly. So It's like a chicken and egg situation, right? It is. Um, it's it's like, a, you, uh, yeah. As a consumer as well, because you have experienced those um, curious before. So you're just like, okay, um, do I pay an extra pound for DPD if it's something valuable you don't really have enough time because you forgot or you just want it ASAP, um, then you are willing um, to pay that extra pound. If it's not, you are willing to sort of like, you know, compromise on the carrier and take two to three days and knowing that it's potentially going to come with one of like the, the lower um, carrier services that we have. but you are aware as a consumer, but you're allowing them to have that option. If you force an option onto a, a customer, it's just like, yeah, like it doesn't necessarily sit well all the time. So the more options that you have, like the more flexibility a, yeah. is the conversion. Is there a balance? I mean, it'd be interesting to hear what sort of conversion stats improvement. So we've done a podcast in the past with Klarna, for example. Mm -hmm. We knew, we knew it from that the evidence is by our adding in another payment type, but also actually it's a bit more flexibility, especially in the in the current sort of cost of living crisis. Being able to spread that payment potentially is beneficial. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, if you give, you know, I sort of see some websites where it's Amazon Pay, PayPal, Klarna, ClearPay, normal credit. It's like I don't. Know, it's almost like you. Know, too many options. I apologize to the American people watching this, but it's a bit like going, I remember going into a into a bagel store in America and they're like, how can we help you? And I'm like, I'd like a bagel, please. And they're like, which one? And there's like 50 bagel choices. And I'm like, oh. Salmon cream cheese. You're like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, like, I don't know what. <laughs> I didn't know where to go because there was just so much choice. Yeah. So that's got to be the same here. If we go back to our sort of my interjection here, which is around conversion rate improvement I'd, you know, I'd love to hear if you sort of an indicative stat by having this multi-faceted multi-optional view of couriers yeah you know how you see that improve but also i suppose there must be a, a scenario where we don't want to give every possible permutation because again the people that oh, i just want my pass yeah no definitely i think there's always like anything in life, you just need to strike that balance, right? And it very it varies between businesses because you have businesses who are shipping um, locally. Um, so you don't necessarily have too many options when you're shipping locally. Yeah. You probably want to go with like your Royal Mail or yeah, like your every um, as a second option and maybe yeah, DPD um, Express, for example, for Express options. Um, I think the 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 more complex it gets is when you're starting to ship internationally. Um, so then you have to offer options in Germany, let's say options within the Netherlands, uh, depending on a different location, but within every country that you're shipping, we, we don't necessarily recommend a number, uh, but the success that we see is when you have like, three to four shipping options like that that is kind of like your ideal um and then that doesn't overcomplicate things like you said like when you're going into a, a restaurant and you have a full menu of like 50 pages and you're like where do i start from it's like yeah. also you know it's like the kiss model just keep it simple uh, yeah. but offer options yeah i think three to four is i'd say the same on payment yeah as well just some options but not not all the options <laughs> and then you also mentioned um although you haven't committed to me like what percentage yeah. conversion you typically so again i don't i i i thought like i'll i'll be able to slide this i don't want to really commit on a, a percentages but no, I'm not committing, but i think it's just given indicative 
um, again, um, it really, because the businesses, the type of businesses really vary, right? Uh, you're like different industries. If we're talking within like the pharmaceutical is very different when we're speaking about like, um, you know, uh, food and beverage, for example. So there isn't, but we do offer that consultancy and part of the consultancy when we're speaking to the clients. So once we're on the phone with them, we'll definitely give them those numbers. Okay. Cool. Uh, Semi well dodged. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, you also mentioned about going into the EU, and I think, especially for our British listeners, mm. that's been a source of pain probably since Brexit. Brexit, yeah. I'm trying to think how long ago it was now. Yeah. We up for two years this yeah. Christmas, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely been painful. People have definitely retracted i'd say from selling into yeah. europe i mean i think those i've seen do it well and um, you know i mentioned dhl earlier those are the ones that seem to be the main courier mm -hmm. that nailed that or made it easier but i think it's mainly because in someone someone made a wise decision to cancel a load of truck and van orders and buy some airplanes instead and then yeah. flew the stock into so you're missing all the port queues which yeah. i think is a, it was a genius decision um but yeah, I think a lot of our people would, I still think it's a big market. You know, I think Germany's got the second biggest e-com market in, in Europe. Spain's fastest growing is what I hear at the moment. Yeah. You know, France is not that far behind. I think Ireland is often ne neglected from the UK. Yeah. Um, but it, at the moment, it's almost easier to send stuff to America, which is mad. I know. But, so I think it's and saying how someone like a, utilizing a send cloud just can take there's perceived barriers or that concern around paperwork trail and just know that it's a slicker, more time efficient, more cost effective solution. Yeah. So very good question. And this is why um, from us, like it, it, it has become a niche, um, especially for, for UK businesses. And I think if I remember my data correctly, I'll give you some data right now. Um, there were, so it was about 30% um, of the, um, the shipping was actually international pre-Brexit, and that dropped to about 1% and 0% to a lot of businesses. So definitely there is a major loss there. Um, but with a solution like SendCloud, um, we sort of facilitate that process. And what I mean by that is, A, from the carrier side of things, so if you're looking to go internationally and you're not necessarily aware of um, the different carriers, you don't know who you should go to and you don't necessarily want to go and commit to a contract without really testing, like a solution like SendCloud will give you that access to go in and test and see, okay, maybe within the Netherlands, I want to use Postnel, you know, within a uh, um, different country, I want to use X. So you have the option to test for as long as you want. And normally, like we say, between like three to six months is the period where you can really test the carrier. And then because we have the relationship as well, and if a customer is going internationally, they ha also have the volumes between the both of us, we can actually support in getting them a, a, a good rate directly with the carrier, which then doesn't mean that they need to stop using SendCloud because they can still upload their own negotiated contracts into the solution and use it as a SaaS software. Um, that's one element of it. Obviously, with international um, you know, shipping um, comes a lot of paperwork, your CN22, CN23, um, your custom documents, and we basically automate that whole process. Um, so you will just need to put in the most important data, like your um, VAT, your URI numbers, and so on, plug that into the system. And as soon as you're printing your documents, like all those documents are being printed as well, uh, which makes it a hell lot easier so you really really make that process so seamless and easy for the merchants and therefore for the end consumer as well so time saving Money massive time saving big time okay yeah and so I, in terms of features of syncloud we've talked about career selection unless there's any other bits you want to hear so mm. it sounds like you're working with a plethora of of options available and and you've got some great rules set up in terms of understanding well this is probably your best option for this territory or for this parcel under this weight mm -hmm. um i assume that some of that can be overridden or there's some rules around it yeah 
what are other you know other sort of core features? Or again, I try and look at it always from the consumers. Like, where is my parcel? Mm-hmm. So it'd be great to hear about sort of track and trace. And I suppose um, you know, I, I bought something from Sweden the other day, and a great product. Um, but unfortunately, it failed after about six six weeks. So I contacted them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, can you just show me a picture of the fail? Yeah, no problem. Here it is. Ban, right. You know, and it was just a really low sort of impact on my daily life. Yeah. Process. You know, it's like, really sorry that's happened. We'll send, we'll send you a brand new product to replace it. Here's a courier label, print it out, repackage it, and arrange, and then, you know, click this link, arrange a day for them to come and pick it up. They'll pick it up. We'll receive it back. We'll send it you. I mean, it literally was, you know, it wasn't. Oh, you need to go in the car. You need to go and do this. You did not drive it to this. But it was just like, oh. it was just like we'll pick it up from your doorstep. Yeah. So, it's like from a consumer point of view, I now hold that brand uh, okay. in high esteem. Yeah. yeah. And you'll probably recommend it to your friends and yeah. family. Exactly yeah. that. And the word of mouth recommendations have gone through the roof. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our referral friends would be very happy with those uh, kind of referrals for sure. Um, I think three points, right? Um, just to quickly um, touch upon the, the 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 methods, right, and the shipping rules. So the shipping rules are very much customizable for the for the uh, merchants. So you come in; it's not that there is um, a specific shipping rule that is across all customers. It's based on your product, based on your requirements, based on the carriers that you're using. But the whole idea behind the shipping rule is a um, automating that process, but also between the different carriers that you're using, making sure that you are using the best rates given the the sizes of the products that you're shipping uh, and the types of product uh, products that you're shipping. So if it's uh, within the arts, for example, um, you want to make sure that you're insuring it. So you want to say if a product um, uh, costs X amount then insure by X amount. So that whole process is just automated and it's customizable per um, per client and per customer. Um, the second element of it, which uh, was the track and trace. Um, and I mean, I always say this, but like also think about it from a customer perspective. Um, as soon as you buy a product, um, you get your email, it's out for delivery. and you immediately open that email. It's not like the newsletter that you receive that you just like immediately select delete and it goes to your, you know, your bin, you know? These are the type of emails that we are engaging with as consumers. If you're working directly with a, a career, it, not that it's bad, it's okay, it does the job, uh, it does what it says in the tin, but you have less control in terms of you know, branding, you know, putting your brand in the forefront of, in front of your consumers. Uh, with the track and trace from a SendCloud perspective, you get a fully branded track and trace emails. And on average, you get four emails. So um, out for delivery, um, if there's a delay, um, and then um, when it's delivered, for example. And each email has an open rate of 91%, right? So if, and each email could be opened up to four times, so if you're utilizing that through branding and through marketing, a linking in your Instagram, for example, with the, the top um, engaged posts, for example, or um, you're putting in um, offers. So now we're coming on to peak seasons, you know, uh, referrals, like we mentioned, refer a friend and get a 20% discount. Or for your more loyal customers, if you want to give them exclusive access to the new release, for example, like there are different ways that you can look at it. Um, and actually, in most cases, um, and if this was utilized in the right way, um, I would say, especially within the, the, the SMB sector, like that in itself could cover the cost of the solution. You know what I mean? So there is huge investment in return investment if you're using the track and trace properly. And this is a means of communication that you know your customers are engaging with. So why not utilize that and brand it and take that experience um, all the way through within the journey? Um, And the last point I would say is the returns. Obviously that has become absolutely massive, you know, during COVID, we're all stuck at home. 
um, just ordering random stuff, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. ordering clothes that we think we're gonna wear, um, but haven't, and maybe grew out of it sometimes. <laughs> uh, but yeah. you then want to return it, and if you didn't have that automation of that seamless process, um, so for example, with SendCloud at the moment, all you need to do is put your return portal, so through a hyperlink, go to your return policy, put that link as a customer. You say, cool, like. Uh, I want to return this um, pair of jeans or, you know, this, um, um, I don't know, uh, iPhone that I bought that's not working, whatever it might be. Um, You just go in, put in your tracking number, you'll see all the items that you bought and you call, you're like, actually, I want to return this red beanie uh, because I actually ordered the red one. And as a store, you have the option to give refunds, you can give store credits, um, and you can uh, give exchange and that's all done automatically and the customer does not have to speak to a customer service agent at all. Um, with some carriers, you now have the QR code, which is paperless. So you just go to the shop and you drop it and that's fine. Yeah. Um, you can also schedule deliver uh, pickups from your home and they come. So just making that process and every touch point, we always talk about with any tech partner in the industry, it all goes down to the customer experience. If you're you're fitting your product and you're show, your product is showing value within the customer experience, you're winning. So make sure that, yeah, that is sort of done and that whole process, again, is saving time and therefore saving you money. And it might seem like very trivial, but it has a huge impact. And this is what a lot of businesses need to keep in mind as well. Yep. Again, I think it comes back to that ability to resell to that person if it's poor painful you're burning all that acquisition effort and cost exactly in in terms of getting a one-time buy versus building a loyal customer exactly i mean we we had a few webinars uh, recently but like it's all about the acquisition side of things right like sorry the retention the acquisition is one thing but how do you retain these are the little things that the add-ons that help you retain your customers. And yeah. when you think about it, like in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really cost you a lot, but no. it will make you a lot more money. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 We, we, we've done a couple of podcasts on that. I'm sure we'll do more because I just I still think it's an in you are a not so <laughs> considered area of exactly. of the ecosystem. You know, it's like I've done my job. I've, I've got some traffic in and I sold a product. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I, I reflect on other industries. I think car garages are weak on it. You, know, you go and buy a car and you know, like, oh, yeah, you need to bring it back for service, but there's no proactivity from it. Yeah, exactly. And then I like, I just want to kind of like circle back and you were speaking in the beginning in terms of like from a merchant perspective, they're like, okay, but like there's so, so many things that I need to consider, right? And this is why it's also important to to work with partners that are going to bring value to your business and at each stage of the process from from your perspective uh, like as an agency you are probably working and recommending maybe eight to nine you know um tech partners within that tech stack you know yes, i'm a big believer in best of breed you know so I, I know how important a good customer experience is from a you know purchase delivery and if needs to be a return point of view mm. But it's not my world. Exactly. It's, it's complex, you know, as I said earlier, multifaceted, multi-layered world. So for us, it's partner with someone that's a specialist in it rather than, you know, yes, I want to learn about it, but I know I'm never going to know it intrinsically. Exactly. And so for me, it's like, how do I add to my team by having a specialist in that area that's going to give me that knowledge and advisory that, you know, we could all learn law, but we all end up hiring lawyers or solicitors yeah and you can think about it from this very uh, different aspects obviously for us it's the, the end consumer in the end of the day or for the merchants it's about the end consumer given that experience but also yeah. for the merchants you know um, how can we give them that experience as well so 
when they go for you as an agency, it's, you know, the, the network that's around you. And when they go to a tech partner, it's a network that's around them. So uh, it's all it's always about the partnership in every single element, right? So even from a SunCloud perspective, we cater to everyone across the spectrum. So all the way from small businesses to, to large businesses, enterprise businesses, and the network around us in terms of the partnership element. So yeah, um, partnerships with WMS system, ERP systems, and so on. If we have that in place, then it just makes the merchant's life a lot easier when they're deciding who they're going to work with. So it's always good to keep those kind of yeah um, ideas in mind when you're approaching um, you know, partners. I completely agree. I think we're singing, singing from the same hymn sheet. Yeah. Um, I suppose one of the things for me, is if I follow on from that, is you know, there are a variety of, of um, shipping solutions out there. And so was, for our listeners, why SendCloud versus a, a another? You know, what, what do you see as your USP, as your points of difference? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, um, again, um, there is room for everyone and there is a piece of the cake for everyone in the market. And our competitors are also there at what they're doing. What sort of... Um, puts us aside and puts us maybe some time in certain situations above um, is, I would say, the internationalization element. Um, and specifically because um, I feel like I'm repeating myself a little bit, but uh, being able to patch up Europe, um, there's no one in the market that can do that. And we're the number one when it comes to that. So uh, that's definitely uh, one way we see it. Um, I think in terms of support, um, I don't know a lot of people overlook that when they're you know looking at a solution uh, but you have a touch point with someone from SendCloud all the way um, after your purchase right so you've got the the consultancy um, you've got the partner manager um, you've got your um, CS support so um, you're like yeah online um, you've got your chat support and you can call and connect with them at any point and if you are a customer for example that is actually using our rates um, things like we we're saying if something is delayed or something has gone missing or broken or whatever it might be that is completely taken in-house by SunCloud to make sure that um, that product is found, um, insured, if it's insured, the insurance is paid and so on. Um, and then last but not least, um, I would say is the returns element. Um, and like I said, that is something that has become super huge um, in the, the time that we live in post COVID and obviously during COVID, um, but this is one of the biggest focuses that we have. Um, and nowadays as a, as a business, as an e-com business, if you're not offering that flexibility, um, you're missing out. Um, so I think, yeah, uh, I would say if I wrap it up, seamless shipping, returns and support, and obviously internationalization. Brilliant. Cool. And if people want to find out a bit more information about SendCloud or want to reach out to you, listening to the podcast, what's the best way for them to go about it? Um, they can reach me um, on LinkedIn, um, and my name is Rahab Fadari, you can see my name, um, but also um, they can go directly to our website um, and request for a demo, and someone will um, get in contact with them ASAP. Brilliant. Fantastic. Oh. Rehab, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to catch up. And uh, I'm sure we'll speak soon. Yeah, thank you so much. That was um, a lot of fun. And yeah, we'll definitely speak soon. See you. All right, take care. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.